I cry at a beautiful plate of vegetarian food and also <laughs> pink hats. Anything can set me off. Before I was a poet, before I was a professor, I was a girls basketball player in Sumter, South Carolina. And I want to say something about what I learned from those days. This moment here feels like offense, right? You know offense, the, per the beautiful person who shoots the ball and makes the, 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 the net swish and you get two points and you run down the court and they look all pretty, you know. That wasn't me, I didn't play that. I played defense. All right. This is a defense moment. We all enjoying each other, we loving each other. When we go back out into that world, this will change. We have to learn to play defense. Defense is ugly and sweaty. And nobody really wants to talk about the defense person too much. They want to go to the offensive person, the person who makes the three-pointer. Well, we got the three-pointers already. Barack Obama gave us a list of three-pointers. what is now on the books. You can't just hit the button when the computer says sign this petition. They don't care about that. You gotta write a letter, you gotta call a senator, you gotta call a House of Representatives person, you gotta call the governor, you gotta say defense, defense, defense. This is what the poet has brought. But I have to say before I read this poem, I was a, I'm a daughter of this deep Southland. I, I know what I know, right? And I was taught, you know, to be obedient and kind and thoughtful. And I love that I was taught that. But until I met Majestic Simpkins' words in my life, I didn't know I could be kind and thoughtful and generous, and also fight like hell. So, I thank her for these words that begin this poem. And it's a quiet poem because I like quietness, but I also like what I have to do with that quietness in the world. So this is what Ms. Ms. Simpkins said. She said, she said to Strom Thurmond in 1948, she said, I said I'm gonna fight Strom Thurmond from the mountain to the sea. You with your ivory chipped six shooter words pointed at our dream filled churning up the hill wanting to be better hearts. You on your glittering presidential runway with your extra large holsters of warbling hate. On both sides of your hips and lips your rat-a-tat-tat nickel language of destruction Cling clanging in the microphone of our everyday, your worthless cheap silver lingo never adding up, bulldozing and belittling how far we've come, pouring your imported gasoline on our hot under the collar fears, you and your little Pac Man hunger games, eating away at what frightens us, then dangling the live detritus before us like something we need to be gargantuan. You and your titanic private jets of hatred pointed at all who do not share your shock of thinning blonde hair. You rising and falling a hot air balloon of unwonder, floating above us, raining down on us, never looking us in the eye, tucking dynamite near our homesteads, our heart forts, our bald eagles, our wheat fields, our inner cities, our migrations forward. You with your trusty little band of loud, pointless aggressives, a rising river of believers threatening us by memorizing together all the architectural arpeggio low notes of, I'll build me a wall. Your camphored heart. You and your kin with your mean-spirited manifestos and hymns gathered together at the picnic, ever excited to be witnesses to the new hanging of the sovereign kindness and empathy for each other 
that we are still working on, you and your kind, standing around for the photo shoot, and then the mailing out of the bloody postcard with, wish you were here, on the back, all while pointing up to the still swaying branches, to all that remains of what was once a human being. You and your little, let me close the deal, atomic bomb eyes threatening a world that refuses to turn the arena over to you. Your orchestra of brass knuckle sound alikes and billionaires who didn't want you to be president any more than I wanted you to be president, who didn't have the courage to tell you. What a worn out scarecrow of a fear monger you are. Standing at droopy attention in our sunflowered field you are. Wearing the same scary look, asking the presidential parade organizers last week, um, can I have a tank in the parade? I really want a tank in the parade. And being told absolutely, unequivocally, no, Mr. President-elect, that would not be appropriate. Those who put you there wait with worry, unable to imagine one more environmental protection order, one more solar windmill turning on the plains or the parkland, one more black president with a beautiful Muslim name, one more black woman flawless with army muscles. <laughs> Thank you. 